Welcome, I'm Dr. Malescu, and I'll be teaching the lecture portion of Anatomy and Physiology 1, as well as the laboratory portion of Anatomy and Physiology 1. So if you're watching this video, this video is specifically designed to describe um, what is going to be occurring in the lecture portion. Okay, so the lecture portion is, um, our section is AP 1301. F, okay, um, we have many students. I welcome you all. So what I want to do is um, learn more about all you 76 beautiful souls. So the first assignment on Monday will be uh, throughout the week, just whenever you get a chance, it's no rush, just upload your bio. I don't have a deadline on it, but I just wanna get to know you all. Um, and if you just click on that assignment, it is worth five points. Um, it'll delineate exactly what you need to describe in your bio. Basically, your typical, my name, what, you know, why your age, your name, um, why you came to Daytona State College, what your degree is, um, your degree uh, direction is, I should say, uh, what program you wish to go in. And then if you want to go into more detail, um, you know, talking a little bit about, okay, I have so, so, so many pets and these are my family members. Um, but more importantly, what I really wanted to just get an information on uh, about each individual is that what type of learner are you? Are you a kinesthetic learner, like hands-on, which makes it hard with virtual? Are you a visual, which makes it easy with virtual? Or kinesthetic, or a combination of all three? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your goals? And um, I just want to be here as the guide by the side to uh, make your journey in anatomy uh, a little bit more pal palatable because as you know, um, anatomy, it's a massive amount of information uh, in, in the least amount of time. Um, but if you're going into medicine, right, if you're going into the medical field or the scientific field, um, you have to be quick on your feet, especially if you're going to be a nurse. PA or physician, um, you have to be quick on your feet and use the knowledge that you have uh, in the back all the way, get the cobwebs out and literally regurgitate it out and be able to apply it, not just memorize the information that you're learning. You're learning about the body, which is so foundational to medicine. You're learning about the um, body as it functions normally before you can go on to pathology and, and all the other subjects that you will um, learn in, in either medical school, PA school, PTA school, nursing school, chiropractic school, optometry school. Did I mention any others? I don't know, but there's a lot in medicine. It's just so amazing how many fields we can go into. And there's like what I did is I went to podiatric medical school. So I became a lower extremity anatomy guru because I mean, we did more anatomy than I ever wanted to, but it was amazing. And yes, it was challenging, but I love teaching anatomy because there's just so much to learn. And um, just wanna let you know that we are lifetime learners. Just because you get a degree here at the college and you work with me doesn't mean that you come out of this being an anatomy expert. This is anatomy 101. I mean, this is the, the, the brick layer at the bottom. And then brick by brick, we, we will learn year by year and even way into adulthood, um, into old age, there's always something new that we learn about the body, okay? So we're getting together to co-create the development on your part of logic, critical thinking skills, and most importantly, as I said before, downloading massive amounts of information in a short period of time so that you can respond with the correct answer so we are going to do that, okay? We'll have 10 quizzes at least um, in the laboratory section to get you to really respond quickly and be able to regurgitate the information, uh, but, but just not just memorizing, but just understanding what you're being asked to do. So isn't that what a doctor or a nurse is supposed to do? Um, you know, know the body so well that you can on the fly know exactly what needs to be done. All right, so this course is foundational. Enough about that. I'm going to go now into, as I'm looking up, so if you see me, my eyeballs looking up, um, I'm looking up at my screen. 
Um, human anatomy, like I said, is very challenging. So for the lecture portion, um, there's just a lot of content, but not as much testing. There's way more assessment in the lab because, you know, traditionally, now we're virtual, but traditionally lab was uh, hands-on. Okay, so due to COVID-19, this entire semester for anatomy is online, both lecture and lab, okay? So with this lecture portion in the lecture shell, this is where you'll find this video, you will have four exams, okay? And those four exams plus the lab grade, which is, we'll delineate that in the other video where I will talk to you about the lab section, you will have earned 300 points. That's if you have perfection. Perfection is never really truly achieved. I did get a few students as adjunct that did get, that did earn the 300. But uh, 300, okay, you gotta be the warrior like in 300. That's the goal, 300 points in lab. So that 300 points plus your four exams in lecture, 400 points, okay, so what is that? equal that equals 700 points okay and then we have a, a couple of other things like we have discussions another 20 points there you also in the lecture portion you will have a uh, optional it's voluntary optional cumulative uh, final exam that's worth 100 points that exam is only there for you if you muck up <laughs> If you screw up the practicals, because the lab has um, 10 quizzes, a midterm practical, and a final practical. So if your points are just not there for you and you need to gain some points, that's where you catch up with the optional final cumulative exam. All right, and you have one more opportunity to get another 10 points and another 5 points. So here they are. These are bonus points, the student PowerPoint voluntary assignment. What is it about? Well, um, in our AMP1, we will be going over specific um, organ systems. So we'll be going over skin. So integumentary system, you could do a disease on it. So the PowerPoint will be a disease, uh, the history of the disease, um, who discovered that particular disease. I don't know, let's say it's psoriasis. Uh, signs and symptoms, diagnosis, treatment, um, and then future future studies and, and um, future research. And of course, if the person, like example, if this was a PowerPoint on cancer, you wanna do the uh, three year, five year, and 10 year survival rate. Okay, so that's your uh, extra 10 point uh, voluntary assignment. This is all brand new. I added this in this semester. So either it could go really, really well, or people might hate it, I don't know. But you know what, it's voluntary, it's a bonus. So I, I think it can only help. And it'll also tie in everything that you've learned into an application of um, a disease, because it's, it's great. That's how you know right away whether I really like going into, I wanna go into medicine, I really like this, okay? This is a foundational course, might as well get started right away. Okay, and then the last thing is the student uh, biography. So the student biography, um, just introduce yourself, your, your full name. Um, like I said, uh, there's 76 beautiful souls out there that I will be uh, working with, okay? And that is you out there listening to me right now. So I wanna get to know you, all about you. So that's the bio. So tell me your name, your age, um, the year that you are in college. So you may be a freshman, you may be even a dual enrollment high school student. I have one that's dual enrollment right now at, at Seminole High School. So uh, please tell me about yourself and your goals. And um, like I said, what you want to go into, what degree you are seeking, what program you want to go into, what kind of learner you are. Okay, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Okay, and of course, let me know exactly what you need to succeed. Okay, um, because a lot of people when I'm in the classroom are afraid to tell me because they're shy, they're surrounded by, other, by their peers and they don't wanna be judged. But some students will say to me hey, privately, I may need more time to process all of this and that's fine. Just let me know and I will be there for you. And also, if you need more time with me for tutoring, okay, we have supplemental um, 
instruction, all right? And I've invited the, uh, the teachers, the student uh, tutors that are there. Um, they are in my shell and they can meet in virtual classroom with you and go over things. We will have a mock practical with the lab section. We'll elaborate on that when I get to the lab. Um, so there are many ways that you can reach out to me. Just because we're not meeting in person doesn't mean that you're not learning. This is not correspondence school. This is distance learning, but it's very hands-on because I am the type of teacher that will not just dump and run the PowerPoints and go, you know, dump and run, look at the PowerPoint, study it, and then take the test. No, it's not like that, okay? Um, I have YouTubes that you can watch that I've created from lab. I have um, review guides, okay? I have handouts, I have PowerPoints. Yes, I do, and I'll be working on narrating them. But most importantly, we have virtual classroom. So that is where most of the learning will take place as if we were in person. You will see me, I will see you, unless you don't want to. Um, you can turn the camera off. And you can type in the chat box questions. You could put your microphone on briefly and talk to me, okay? So these are all the methods uh, of teaching online. All right, so the last thing I wanna talk about is uh, me. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you wanna get to know who I am and who your instructor is. So um, again, my first name is Dacia, D-A-C-I-A. C-I is Ch in Italian, like if you look at the word ciao, if you ever looked at the spelling ciao, C-I is Ch. So if you ever wondered, because I have a foreign name, what, how do you pronounce this professor's first name? It's Dacia, and guess what? There are two more in the directory for Daytona State College that have my name. So I was pretty impressed with that because I never find, I have the most unique name. Um, but it, it is a Romanian name. Um, Malescu is my maiden name, although I'm married. Um, I go by that because both of us were physicians when we got married. So I didn't want to, I already have my diploma. I don't want to change my diploma just because I changed my name. So I didn't change my name. So my poor kids are hyphenated. So that's all about me. I was born and raised in New York City. My parents are from Europe. Um, they escaped communism in Romania in 1968. Um, communism fell in 1989. Um, in, in Romania specifically, it was December 21st, 1989, pretty much very soon after the Berlin Wall came down. Um, I haven't been there since. Um, I went there in 1991 before going to medical school. So that's pretty much my ethnic background, if you will. Uh, because I have a foreign name, I always like to, um, you know, let people know who, where I'm coming from, who are my ancestors, because um, I'm not your vanilla white, although I am very white. <laughs> um, what else did I want to say? Yes, I am bilingual. I do speak Romanian, so that helped me a lot with teaching anatomy because a lot of the words are in Latin. So that helped tremendously. Oh, I don't want to use that. It sounds like I'm um, just repetitive. Tremendously, tremendously. <laughs> uh, what else? I went to college, Hofstra University in New York, um, and I graduated with a bachelor in biology, chemistry minor, psychology minor. That's what I did. Got into podiatric medical school from 1991 to 1995. Uh, did four years of medical school, got my license and the boards and all that. If you're going to become nurses, you'll see there's a lot of hoops to jump, a lot of obstacles. And that was not enough. Um, I had to do a three-year residency. I matched with a surgical residency at St. Barnabas Hospital in the Bronx, Bronx, New York. Um, loved it, absolutely loved it. Got to see a lot of crazy things, gunshot wounds to the foot. So I got all my traumatology there. Um, learned a lot, and um, then I became a practicing podiatric surgeon, which meant that I had to accrue about 100 cases, and almost like a thesis, a big fat notebook was created on um, the workup of all my patients and their process throughout the surgery. So that took another, <laughs> from age 28 to 35, that's how many years it took me to become a board certified foot and ankle surgeon. During that time, I got married and along the way, boom, 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 one after another, I had Irish twins, not literally. I had um, one kid after another, all 24 months apart. So my patients used to make fun of me because I was perpetually pregnant from 1999 
to 2003. <laughs> so um, 2001 happened and that was pivotal in my career. 9-11 really affected me, um, my family, um, emotionally as well. Um, I did lose a friend there, um, but my practice tanked. Um, we lasted about another two years there and then we got the heck out. No, not even two. I believe we got to Florida, you know, it was two. We arrived in Florida July of 2003. Yes, 2003. Yep. So I've been in Florida since 2003, but I still have my New York accent and I still say coffee. Voila. <laughs> so um, what happened between Florida and the present COVID-19. A lot, I have to say. I raised all my three children. I have a uh, college student at UCF. He is going to be 21 um, in November. I have a freshman college student at FSU and she is going to be, uh, let's see, she's going to be 19 um, next year in February. And then I have a senior in high school who's going to be 17, she's very young, uh, September baby, but was super smart. I put her in private school and so I got her pushed up forward. So she's my only 17 year old September baby that um, is a senior. So she hopefully will um, go somewhere, I don't know where, but she's definitely going to college. So that's that. And uh, between then and now, arriving from Florida in 2003, I did practice medicine up until 2012, but um, my health progressively worsened. Um, but it wasn't the health conditions that you would think. It was all because of the fact that I grew up as a gymnast. Um, I had a scholarship division one for gymnastics and I let that go in college for pursuing medicine. I could not be pre-med as well as um, a division one gymnast. It's just too much on the, on the body and the mind and the soul. It was soul crushing. It was just so much work. I couldn't do it. So, but all that gymnastics um, made uh, a lot of issues um, evident. Let's just put it that way by the late forties. So I had terrible arthritis. I have congenital hip dysplasia. So I ended up with bilateral hip uh, replacements and I had chronic back pain since 2008 when I had um, a car accident. And because of that car accident is why I got into teaching. So everything happens for a reason. Because if I never would have gotten into that car accident, I would never have gotten into looking at alternative careers from being a surgeon. And I would have never discovered the gift that was given to me that I'm, I feel that I, I, it's my calling to teach. So I started out with just teaching, believe it or not, yoga and Pilates, because that's what got me healed. It healed my back and my hips to an extent enough that I was able to walk and stand, but not enough that I can stand in the OR many hours uh, and, and be able to perform my, my surgical duties. So in the end, I uh, eventually quit medicine and along the way I was looking for employment as a teacher. So I started out at the bottom. Money was not an issue at this point. I just wanted a new career. So I basically started teaching uh, anatomy uh, in a, at a personal training school, teaching the yoga teachers because I was already a yoga teacher. So I was teaching yoga plus anatomy. And then after that, I went on to massage school teaching anatomy over there. So this was back in 2009, 2010. And then from 2010 to 2015, that was five years, I taught anatomy full time. And by 2012, I got out of medicine. All right, and then the last story is that between uh, January 2016 to the present, I have been teaching at Daytona State College. I started out as adjunct January 2016. And I am proud to say that I am finally now full-time, temporary full-time though. Um, and so hopefully I will be permanent full-time, but I am temporary full-time assistant professor at Daytona State College. So I am here for you. I am here for you despite COVID-19. I may not be present physically, 
but you can see me and you can hear me and I will always be here for you to help you as your guide by the side to be the most successful you and create the best version of yourself in order for you to enter whatever program that you wish to get into. So good luck, stay strong, stay fierce, stay organized, persist, and you will succeed. You will succeed. All right. Good luck, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.